Welcome to Peace, Love, and Robots, a podcast about anything and everything and all that is in between. I'm your host, Jeremy, and this is episode number 25 for February 24th, 2021. Yeah, number 25 for the 24th. That sounds kind of cool. It's so cool, it took me two takes to read that. Yeah, that's how it works here, folks. Here we are, full steam ahead into the new year, and we've got nearly two months down. Ten more to go. We can do this. As always, this podcast is brought to you by the ads you hear at the beginning and end of the show. So if you listen all the way through, I am forever in your debt. I've made almost $20 podcasting. Actually, if you subtract the money I spend on podcasting, then uh, uh, I'm still in the negative, but that's okay. We're here for the fun of it, right? Anyway, on to the show. Yeah, I just cut that off really abruptly. I'm sorry about that. I'm doing this by hand, direct to tape. I've got to be fast, okay? I might talk too fast. I don't know. <sighs> I'm not a fan of nostalgia, particularly weird nostalgia that's been popular over the last two years, like wishing they'd bring back Acto Cooler or Crystal Pepsi, because nothing ever tastes as good as it did when you were a kid. I don't know what happens when you're an adult. Things change. Maybe your taste buds morph or something. Things become too sweet. And I'm guessing Acto Cooler would just, you know, increase my blood sugar way beyond healthy, uh, healthy numbers. So I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of that kind of nostalgia. It's just weird, right? I, I, I'm trying to, you know, improve my relationship with food. So I guess, you know, Thinking fondly about the food I could eat as a child or as a teenager is not healthy for me. I just think, I actually think it's kind of weird. If that's your thing, you go ahead and run with it. But me, nah, not at all, no. So anyway, I don't like nostalgia or really walking down memory lane, at least, you know, memory lane with my kids is fun, but memory lane on my own is not. None of that stuff. I'm not a fan of it. But alas, I found myself doing that. This past week. See, for some reason, probably because I'm really good at procrastinating. Procrastinating. I wrote that wrong. Procrastinate. Procrastinate. I guess I wrote that right. I don't know. English is my first language, uh, and I'm still making mistakes. But I'm really good at procrastinating. I decided that now, this year, was the time that I just had to clean the inboxes of my multiple Gmail accounts out. Yeah. Yeah, that's nuts. I know I can't be alone when it comes to email. See, I create a new Gmail account with practically every new project I begin, including this podcast, because it's just easier to do it that way when you have a lot going on. Now, remembering passwords is another thing, but thank God for Chrome. Let's just say <laughs> I'll put it that way. So I have two Gmail accounts, my two primary Gmail accounts, and I started the first one way back at the beginning of Gmail because you had to be invited to use Gmail, and I think I got an invitation from somebody. I asked for it, and they gave me a Gmail invite. So I was one of the beta testers, I guess, of Gmail. And uh, and so I, I, I was, once I was able to start – Another one, I started another one that was for, I planned on using it for personal correspondence only. Not mailing list, no junk mail, just personal correspondence. But that uh, only uh, lasted a few months. So both of them started to get full. Like over time, just like a junk drawer, which everybody has, my inboxes were overflowing with over 20,000 emails in them. I it's I didn't get an exact number. I probably should have before I did this because it was just nuts. Over 20,000 emails over the space of like 17 years. So that's a lot of emails. My unread emails were also piling up. So I decided that this would be the year I achieved inbox zero with most of my email accounts. Now, once I finished the unread emails, I noticed that I had a lot of mailing list emails sitting in my inbox for no reason whatsoever. I had read them. They stayed in my inbox, and they were just taking up space. 
So I did uh, a difficult thing. I proceeded to weed through them, deleting thousands and thousands of junk email pretty much over the course of a few days. And it wasn't that difficult of a task because Gmail has this thing where you can separate your inbox into categories, and that made it so much easier. But it took a while. It did take a while. And now I also saved everything that was personal or seemed kind of important. And I moved some emails to different folders, and now my inboxes look so very clean. Very nice. It's a nice feeling. It really is. I, maybe I'm the only one who feels good about that. But it was a nice feeling. However, just as if I was physically cleaning out a file cabinet or like a box of old paperwork, I'm sure you've done this before. I found, um, I found myself going through hundreds of old correspondence with friends that have since grown distant or relationships that don't even exist anymore. These aren't friends that I had a falling out with. I don't have a lot of those in my past. There's a few. There's a few. But I, these are not people I had a falling out with, nor were they people that I was particularly close with. They were just people that uh, I would keep in touch with regularly, and life sort of happened. I got a few new jobs. I had a few more kids. I stopped running in the same circles, and that was mostly because message boards, which was where I got a lot of my online uh, friends, they became a thing of the past. Sure, we had MySpace and then Facebook. We have Twitter. But outside of a few close friends, the people I corresponded with are mostly memories of the past, characters and chapters of a book that has moved on. Why does that happen? Personally, I've never been a good communicator. I don't write letters. I don't send cards. I don't message people on Facebook except for a handful of people. I don't email anyone. So a lot of the blame falls on me, of course. And the reasons for this are many. I've had a few more kids, like I said. I moved on to other interests, and I even stopped creating projects they were following me on. So I'm not above taking the blame for this one. But I started down this rabbit hole, and I found my way to my original podcast, a podcast that I started way back in 2006. Yeah, 15 years ago. Almost 15 years to the date, actually, because at that point in time, podcasting was really in its infancy. There were a lot of us out there trying our hand at this, but podcasting was still very niche. You had Adam Curry out there doing stuff, and uh, that was about it. That was about the only big name doing podcasts back then. Now, there were definitely iPods, but smartphones did not exist. And listening on your iPod to podcasts required a little bit of technical know-how. You had to subscribe to RSS feeds. You had to do a bunch of stuff in iTunes. It was a mess. It was hard. I mean, it, anybody can do it, but it was just, it required a lot of steps, and a lot of people did not want to take those steps to get to podcasts. But I really wanted to give it a shot, so I did. And it was terrible. Okay, don't try going out to find them either, because thankfully, I was able to scrub all of those old episodes from the internet. They're gone. They were deleted. They're gone. <laughs> and uh, I was in an interesting place when I did record them. At, at the time, I was working a temp job and was subsequently fired a few days after my first episode. And then I worked construction, and I was very bad at construction. <laughs> there were only about four episodes. Two of them were about 20 minutes. The others were really short, like two or three minutes each. It was less than an hour of content, and none of it was good. The sound was okay, though. I had a decent dynamic mic and a mixer, all of which was pretty high-end for its time. I ended up selling all that stuff years later uh, because I was done. I, I Well, I always had an interest to podcast, but I was done. I, I just didn't know what I was going to do. And uh, But what would my life have been if I had kept going? I'm a realist enough to, to know or at least doubt I would have become a viral success I didn't have enough talent, and I definitely wasn't connected enough. I would have plugged away on this cheap podcast host that I was using, deleting old episodes in order to stay within my storage space limit. But in a way, those early shows were just practice for what I'm doing now. So I don't expect this show that you're listening to right now to make me rich and famous. I wouldn't turn it down, but I'm not doing this for any other reason than to habitually and regularly produce content for whatever listeners I may be able to get. And if that means I only get a few downloads per episode, which is the case right now, so be it. But I miss my old friends. They were regular listeners. 
They were engaged with the work I was doing, and I was one of only a few signals in the noise of this new thing called podcasting. Now I'm a very, 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 very small signal in a vast ocean of podcasting noise. But, at least in my opinion, the content is better this time around. All right. What are you nostalgic for? You can send me an email at peaceloveandrobotspod at gmail.com or leave me a voicemail at 585-371-8986. When I hear from you, I just might share it on the next episode. Just remember to keep it clean. And don't forget, I'm working on another podcast that I think you'll love. If you're a pro wrestling fan in particular, and if you're tired of the same old, same old wrestling podcast where they talk about the news, they talk about who uh, the latest pay-per-view event and who won and who we're happy with, who we're not happy with, the angles, the storytelling, all that. Yeah, if you're tired of that, we don't do it on this show. You've got to check out Wrestling Makes You Think. And this week we ask the questions, or the question, what do dancing babies, macho raps, and Max Moon's PJs make you think of yeah it's a fun one and if you have the time i'd love for you to rate review and share both shows they're not hard to find look for them on apple and google podcasts spotify our heart radio and uh, most recently of course audible that is so stinking cool peace love and robots we're ready to believe you